Okay, is everyone ready? Shall we start? Good. Um, so, why are we here? Um, Enrico came to me on Wednesday or Tuesday, I don't know, um, and told me about um, Git and Colab main on ARIO. We have a problem. Basically, um, our main problem is Colab main because um, we have file based git access and um, if you add a hook, the hook gets executed and then you're all UID. So it basically means everyone um, who can connect, um, can com uh, commit to git pull up main is able to um, kill your home if you have um, SSH or forwarding, maybe connect other, uh, kill other homes and other stuff. So That's also great for any team in Olive. Right? Yeah, but call up main is our biggest problem. Okay. So um, that's basically a global problem for Aliyah, but uh, at least for um, most other teams you are able to control who is on that team, which makes the situation less worse than on uh, Collab main. I don't know by hand how many people are able to commit to, to Collab main, but it should be a few hundred. Um, so we thought about replacing our current Git setup with it's more than a thousand. It's more than a thousand. Um, maybe. Okay, okay. Because oh, RDD is plus a few hundred. Yeah, sure. I should add a easy to guess password. Uh, sorry? Likely an easy to guess password. I don't know if we are streaming right now, so the disclosure we want to. But the situation is pretty bad. Yeah. So we have to change something. Um, currently we have. Wow, 22,000 uh, gig repos on um, Alio, which makes 150 gig um, space. And um, yeah, we have five base gig access, which is a problem. So we thought about replacing the whole uh, stuff with a dedicated machine, which also helps getting some load away from Alio. Um, Alio's performance improved a lot in the last year, where I fixed many of the performance problems. But um, it, is, it still can be better. So uh, I already talked to DSA, and they basically open uh, in getting us another system as a Git leaving off replacement. So um, the target of this both is to get a list of our requirements, how we should do it, who should do what, and um, how to proceed uh, next. Um, I had opened some um, Titan pad, that's the URL. Everyone is free to add commands, and I will do that live too. Um, I think you need to reconnect. Yeah, I am connected. Reload the page. Ah. Second half of the um, <coughs> That's a little bit too small. Still, I think it was Okay. Dev Eddie, So, um, the basic idea is currently to move v 2 Live 3. So, um, if anyone has other ideas for software, please edit them and speak up. We also evaluated um, GitLab, which is basically <coughs> a security nightmare, because it bundles just everything that's available on the network, and um, it's basically not maintainable. Um, what we want to um, have is some kind of Ali of integration. I don't want another ID provider. So um, the SSH keys and users, groups, and so on should be reused from um, Ali of. With Git to Lite, that wouldn't be such a big problem because I already have some kind of LDAP exporter and another exporter that just generates um, Git to Lite uh, file, public files. It wouldn't be that hard. Um, 
Yeah, I still want users to create the repos. Petrolite has some shell-like interface where you can create repos and so on, which I want to use. Um, what we don't want <coughs> is uh, arbitrary hoops. Not everyone should just be able to add some hook. What we want to have is to provide predefined hoops that you can just customize for email, web hoops, and so on. Um, yeah, we want something like CJIT, some content. And um, yeah, that's, that's it from my side. So we, need to, we now need your input about how to proceed. What do you need for Git? I have no idea what people are really doing with the Git repos. There are a lot of it. And um, what do you expect from a Git replacement? Do we have some mic? If you are streaming, it would probably help. Mics are on the... the uh, on it's it's <laughs> room mics, but they're very directional. Okay. So okay, so <coughs> I'll ask loudly then. Um, one nice feature of Gitalite is the ability to create uh, repos with a push within some hierarchy, these so-called wild repos. And, I mean, I haven't thought all through all the security issues, but it seems like for a team this could be rather nice, rather than going through a, a shell or some other... Well, you need some way to access this host, and you don't want to give people shell accounts. Uh, I guess. Yeah. What, I, what I call it, uh, Git shell, isn't a shell where you, where you connect uh, where you do SSH to. It's uh, some kind of command interface of Gitolite, where you can just issue commands uh, towards Gitolite. But yes, um, we also want um, that everyone is able to create repos under its user namespace. And probably team admins should be able to create repos in their team namespace with a git push or some dedicated command. What I don't want to write, write or provide is some web interface that creates fancy repos or stuff like that. Um, I think um, some shell-like interface, git-like interface should be enough, at least I hope so. Okay. Um, git like shell is not really anything that you use, except for um, setting tags and other stuff. It's actually not very interesting. Um, but what is very cool about Gitalite, and that's what I think we definitely should go for, no matter what the tool that we choose is, is that the team admin, the owner of a, of a repository hierarchy, um, can create their own um, authentication. So I can I can pull in an alien group, and I can add these three people that I just met at DEF CON who need immediate access. Uh, I can do that all of myself, managed in Git. Yeah, you can manage uh, authorization. Authentication. No, authentication is still handled by Git Alive. Um, yes. You yes. you uh, just set yes. the authorization, authorization rules. Yeah. Yeah. I I agree. It's important for the team uh, admin to be able to add and remove people easily, and even create repositories, and also be able to do it via Git, um, or or most of that via Git at least. Uh, I I wanted to suggest considering Garrett, uh, be, which could either possibly be used with one of the other servers or without, but I think it can support you working with at least Git tiles and maybe uh, Git Olay. Um, the, the, the nice thing there is you can actually configure it via Git pushes if you want. That's supported. And it can integrate with things like LDAP from Alioth or what have you. Uh, I, I, at Google, I use integrate, integrations with their authentication, right? And um, it supports code review, which is a big win that we don't currently have, where if you want somebody else to review your code, whether they're the maintainer and you're an NMU, or you're a sponsee, they're the sponsor, or you're just a maintainer who realizes you, you have your own flaws in coding just like everyone, and want someone else to double check. So. I was going to say, I think this sort of depends on what you think the boundary conditions are around what we're trying to accomplish, mm -hmm. because when I think about Gitalite, it, it's because I mean, when I think about Garrett, mm -hmm. um, there are really sort of three fundamental and then a couple of variations on those workflows that people use around Git. And the part that's the most important to me is that we have a really solid Git revision control infrastructure yeah. underneath and then the 
ability to run any of those workflows that makes sense. Yeah. Whether so, so, would having Garrett available on top of this be good? Absolutely. Do I want everyone to have to deal with Garrett? Probably not. The thing that I was going to say is that I don't currently use this on any because we're not using it. <coughs> one of the things I've really enjoyed about using Gitalite on other projects hosted elsewhere is the per branch permission mechanism. The, you know, maybe this is what we're talking about when we talk about you know, a, a group or things within, but the notion that you can do things like constrain who has the ability to push to the master branch, but anybody who's got permissions within it can pop feature branches to go do work on. That kind of stuff, even if you're not using... You could do that in Garrett. I was going to say, but even if you're not yeah. using a Garrett flow, that kind of ability to sort of structure who has what roles yeah. within a given team can be useful. Yeah. I was just saying, Garrett doesn't even require code review, and you can totally ignore that part of it if you want to. That's the main purpose of code. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, um, the main reason why CollabMain is so bad is, well, partly it's because it's run on Alioth, which is doing far too many other things. That's really bad for security. And the other is that the access control for that is um, insane. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's deliberately insane. Right. Yeah. So um, if we are expecting teams within Debian to do their work in some repo on whatever server that's not Alioth, this new server maybe that we're thinking of, um, we're talking here about maybe allowing that team to modify their access control. If we are to allow uploaders who are authorized to upload that package to Debian, if, if those people are not expected to do like a security review on all the Git branches that they pull, which if, in practice, I don't think anybody does, even though there are people here who say, oh, absolutely, they must. Um, in practice, that's not really a, a usable workflow. Then the set of people who can push to whatever branch the uploader is pulling from, have effective right access to the package, even if they can't immediately upload it, because their work is not going to be checked. And so I don't, I'm not entirely sure, yeah, there are probably reasons why we might want a set of repos with different access control, but it might be that most of the repos we're talking about should have the same access control as the archive. In that, DDs or DMs who have a particular package permission should be able to push to those repos or to those branches or something. So then I guess the question I have, Ian, is in that context, how do we preserve the useful part of the thing that was different about Alioth, which was that we had a lightweight mechanism for allowing folks to collaborate with us at the source code level mm -hmm. even if we weren't willing to give them direct archive? Or are you trying to suggest that you think that the actual practice and behaviors is so scurrilous that it's just not different? Um, if you give somebody, if somebody's got access to, to collab main, then they've got delayed archive access, upload access at the moment. Um, and I don't have any, and, and there's very little auditing on that, um, but I imagine that it wouldn't be very hard to get someone into the archive if you wanted to. It's exactly that reason why we're here, I think. Right. Yeah. Well, if you do want to fix that, you, 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 I mean, I'm not, I'm not pushing Garrett. I just really think it's a good choice. Um, so I guess I am, but not, not for well, not, I, mean, not I, I want to yeah. not have so, any more Garrett plugging because Garrett is not going to solve these problems. I'm about to tell you why it will. Because it can only solve these problems if we can persuade everybody to use it. Can I clarify what I mean? I don't mean mandatory code review for DDs. I do not mean that. You you mean something where everybody has to deal with Garrett? So what I so what I'm no? saying is no. what I'm saying is Garrett can be configured so that those people you know you can push with, you don't have to use the web UI much right right you can you can push directly with Git um, you don't have to push to the REST four branch you don't have to push to that magic branch you can push normally if you have the permissions and so we could configure it so that everyone who's a DD or a DM authorized in certain ways can just push normally if they feel like it and if you are someone who is a random other person who just creates an Alioth account. Um, you can just go through the code review and have somebody do the security review that you say should happen. But it doesn't have to force anyone to use a web UI much if they just want to push with Git. And they don't have to use a special change ID craft and so forth. So that's not mandatory at all. That's exactly doable in almost every other Git server as well. It's not a Garrett unique 
it, from Git Gitterlight could could do it as well as files and unstanded. Yeah. yeah. Right. And Gitterlight, for example, I spoke to Thomas, who was um, who has been thinking about and doing a bit of work on packaging Derek for Debian, and um, he's already gone through a few Java libraries. He's got about. He said, the next thing on my list is such and such, which was a thing I didn't even recognize. Yes, yeah. uh, and he said, oh, I've only got another 30 Java libraries to package for that. We all know what packaging Java libraries is like. Mm -hmm. Whereas Gizalite, of course, is in Debian right now and actually yeah. works. Um, I, I, I absolutely think that we need to be picking something that is already present with security support, mm -hmm. which is the exact reason I'm not pushing my Git server here, <laughs> despite the fact that I think it's better than Gizalite because I am not prepared to put my name on the line for security support for it on, on a platform that big yet. Right. So I think it would be useful to have places where people could push their stuff. Alioff is quite a good place to push your stuff if you, if you don't have authority and you're expecting your stuff to be reviewed. And it, it, it's kind of okay for that. It's not The problem we want to solve is the problem where the team are using Alioff as their primary authoritative server. So under that circumstance, I think the best thing that we can do is to have not a default instantiated set of rules, but really good documentation of how teams should set the rules for their branch policies. Or even so a that, template for that. And a template, exactly. So that you can go, OK, I've created a team repository, and these are the people who have upload rights to the archive. Therefore, they're the only ones who are allowed to push to whichever branch it is that we're saying they're going to upload from and they need to be able to define that for themselves, and everyone else can only push the branches that are prefixed by their username, for argument's sake. So. I think we have two problems here. We have a technical problem about security, and we have a social problem. And yeah. the latter one we are talking, currently talking about is a social problem. The solvable of all those tools we, are, we have talked about. Yes. And um, I don't think this is a target of this bot to solve this social problem. Yeah, we need to um, create some best practices for working with Git, maybe even with Garrett, or whatever tool. But um, what we currently, what I currently want to, uh, want to do is to solve a technical problem, and not a social problem. Yeah, so, but, but the, the point is though that the social problem exposes a technical problem, which is that whichever solution we go with needs to be able to have branch policy type ruling constructible per repository yeah. by the owner of the repository rather than by some putative Git server administrator. Uh, but uh, I don't think it makes sense to restrict for every package uh, who can upload there to, uh, to the Git repository the same as in the repository. If we would go this way, we didn't yeah. have the technical problem because column main would be uh, disallowed by this policy anyway, because it's the whole purpose to allow easier collaboration without setting up teams. So uh, yeah, if, I mean, if, if we Columbus wanted only that, uh, we could only just restrict Elliot anymore. I don't Columbus think... is solving a technical problem. No, it's a... Uh, it yeah. was solving a technical problem, which was that we didn't have a mechanism for easy construction of teams and repositories. Everyone has user repositories. The whole point of column main is that you can allow other people to push into your stuff. Yes, so it was, it was a technical thing. problem that we did not have easy project generation. <laughs> well, that we was had, solved. Well, well it, it actually solved two separate problems with one completed solution. One of them was we didn't have good mechanics for lightweight creation of teams within the project. And the second one was allowing collaboration with people who were not DD, DM, not in theory. And I, I argue that those are actually separate problems because even if we had an easy mechanism for creating teams constrained by identity, that, uh, you know, DD or DM kind of identity, that wouldn't necessarily have solved the, how do we let the random person who happens to be the world's leading expert on this thing help us with it? Well, that's a different problem. But if they have an Alliot account, they can be added to a team. Yeah. The, the, the pain cost was that non-DD, so in, in it still, is that non-DDs can't get it, auto-creation of, of, of project teams. I guess I've always been sufficiently confused about what the point of a lot of Alioth was other than the identification model and support for non-DD 
participation in things. That when we talk about the, the word ally authentic is confusing sometimes. I, I don't mean anything negative by that. I, just, I sometimes find myself struggling to figure out what it is we're actually yeah. talking about. So uh, all of this has boiled down to we need that technical solution of being able to configure these things so that individual projects potentially can choose the policy that they wish to apply, which means that the easy collaboration facilities of Collabmate can be maintained in a way that doesn't cause certain people who have uh, interest in security, like myself and Ian, conniption fits about there being anybody who doesn't currently have upload rights, so the ability to push to a branch that might putatively end up as an upload. Okay. Uh, yeah, just to remember, uh, I'd like to remind about the goal of the discussion here is that um, we currently have uh, developers, I guess most people in Debian, not really understanding how vulnerable the whole audio git setup is, um, as in arbitrary code execution sort of things. Uh, the attack surface is everyone can get an account. It's extremely easy to social engineer the system so that people can get commit access to it. It can get excavated by having hooks that write into Git repositories that are controlled by that person and not in Collabmate. So features are nice, and well, if you want to make it so that Frontest doesn't have to process Collabmate, our request will be only happy. But the point is that in an ideal world, we want to shut down, uh, uh, to make audio kit read only now, and replace it with something now, uh, even in a week with all development stopped, because that's currently that bad. And uh, okay. I would like to start committing around code in Debian control, in repositories, in Collabmind, and others to see, uh, like, adding headers like this developer didn't verify their upload, to have a look if they show up in the archive and then close accounts. Um, so, can I? So, okay, I, I get that and I hear you. I guess, based on that, I haven't heard anyone say anything yet that suggested that Gitalite 3 as an underlying technology was a bad choice. No, I was gonna, I was gonna say this to Enrico, and I'm glad that he uh, brought up this point. We've been looking at Gitalite for about a year now as a serious uh, um, replacement. Um, so far, it's been blocked on the uh, LDAP integration, but we have upstream willing to work on that. And my, I would like to ask the question: um, What sort of things do you think it's alive to wouldn't be able to do that we need? Because I, that's I mean, exactly where I was about to go. So. We can, we can talk endlessly about Garrett and what it, on all these things, but Kitalite seems like a perfect match. Mm -hmm. It's really good software. I agree. It does. I think it does everything that we need. Is there anything we that we need that we just have? We already have a Kitalite instance. Do so. Pardon? Can you repeat the so? We already have a, a Kitalite instance that do so is using for our repositories and some other ones as well. Yeah, but. It would be really nice if we could speak in a, in a loudness that even uh, I'm sitting on the opposite side of, the, side of the room could hear it. Sorry. It would help me really much to uh, be, keep it in the discussion. Was I loud enough? Pardon? Was that, did you hear what I said just then? Yes, and then there was something else said which I didn't understand. So there's, uh, what is it, ubergit.org is the <laughs> server that the DSA people use for our puppet Nagios X entries. Mm -hmm. There is also some other things on there that aren't DSA, I think. I can't remember. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that do other version control systems have this problem on that? Alex? Yes. Version control systems have the same issue on Elias. But we only speak about Git here. Right. The rest of the I have a question. What, what, yeah. what, what, yeah. Where is the right restricted on the root directory in the yeah. domain? I mean, this is something. Because it is explicitly a feature of that system that you can write arbitrary hooks. Well, mm -hmm. no. 
I could be really shy. I oh, would be really interested in getting the answer to the question if you're only looking at Git or not, because that has some impact on this discussion here. So are we looking at other things except Git here as well, or are we only speak or mostly focusing on Git and others we can discuss later? Only Git. Um, only Git. At least for the color of man problem, this is a Git only problem. Okay. But in no, general, the SVN repository as well. Oh, um, uh, it, it, start, it started that way. Uh, I mean, right. But does S all, all the, the repository that uh, please have the same side books? Yes. Oh. So we, we need to but at least there's break only this. one directory. With if we are going to talk about SVN, we're going to have get the, the whole conversation is going to get totally mixed up, and we're going to talk about SVN servers and Git servers, and it's just going to be impossible. We have to like focus here on Git because that was what was in the BOF title. Have yeah. another BOF, BOF for your buzzer and. I had a few of that. Okay, but uh, also, sorry. Also, at the same time, if uh, the scope is bigger, then maybe going the other way around, like restricting hooks. And uh, doing uh, like maybe doing the CH route into the JIT repository or the SVN repository. So regardless, regardless, that server is far too overloaded. If nothing else, making a separate Git server will reduce the load on the rest of Adolf. Right. We should therefore do it regardless of hook access. So, so uh, what you want to do? Uh, for this new Git server is keeping Alioff for authentication but severing the link for authorization and keeping the authorization inside the new Git server. Okay. Okay. Um, has that been discussed with the Fusion Forge upstream? No. I have no idea about the Fusion Forge upstream. I am accidentally uh, root access in Alioff, and right. I haven't seen other Alioff admins for years. So I don't agree that that's what we want to do. I, I well, think the group structures still need to come from Alioff. Yeah, users and, I want users and groups from Alioff, so okay. everyone can add another one to the to group, and um, that's it. I don't agree with that as, a, as, a, as an underlying principle, because uh, that leaves us still with using SSH key-based push. So the authorization for push is based on SSH connection authentication. That's and not, that leaves that's no audit not trail true. of who That's not true. You can still have uh, some HTTP uh, smart server where you can authenticate with a password uh, that would come from Alioff. It's the interesting one. Yeah, I have written for SSO. We have an Alioff startup from Fusion Forge. Also, I don't want Alioff on my GCB. Which can help me use the Apache. I don't want Alioff on my GCB. Trusted computing base. Alioff is Alioff is doing far, far too many things. Right? Even if we dealt with this hooks problem, Alioff has got an enormous number of shell account users, an enormous number of strange pieces of software running on it. I have no confidence that machine isn't controlled by God knows whoever. And that, that can't really change without stopping Alioff being Alioff. Uh, when, uh, I fully agree to the statement, however, I think uh, what we should do is try to break pieces out of Alias. And breaking the Git piece out is, I think, a good thing. However, I really agree that basically we should do the central authentication infrastructure also move away from Alias, but that's another, another topic. And so, if we put me this here, really, is, we, pushes. So, uh, uh, for me, this, this discussion is really whatever we do, it should, it should, it should the use a, cent, a, a central Debian authorization directory. Whether it's now Alias or should all be moved to DB, Debian.org, which I would prefer, is something else. But uh, it, should be, it, it should be able to use something which is an LDAP as authorization source. So, at this point, the proposal for the Git server change does not increase your trust in the Git server, but it does remove load from the machine called Alias. Does, does it decrease your, your trust in Git? Does, yeah. it, does it reduce your trust in that Git service? No. Uh, probably not. No. Okay, good. So it's, it's not a net loss. Uh, well, okay, so long as, you know, after this has been done, nobody is telling me, oh, the problem is fixed now. It's partially fixed. It's an improvement. No, it's not an improvement. It's, it's, partial improvement. it's one that's a very small improvement. improvement. It was very bad, and now it's, it's just a bad. huge improvement because you have yeah. a much better yeah. audit trail on Gitterlite, actually, than you have with any. Uh, it's a really good audit trail. Gitterlite can really? produce okay. an audit log. You, it it, it, it that basically that records the person who owns the SSH identity, and you can have multiple versions, even like per project, 
and it records that time, of course, the commit that was made for every single project that you can access. It, it is better. And I do expect that moving uh, SCM from Adios will remove a lot of the need for shell access to that machine. And that in a certain future, uh, shell access could be done on demand and not by default. Absolutely. The only time I've done shell access on any in years is just to do Git management. Right. Um, what, what kind of hooks are needed for, for example, pull up main? Um, and is it possible to, to have some, some templates there or even some ready so scripts that can so be <coughs> switched on and off? Yeah. I think Gitterlight has uh, a hook management piece of functionality in it. It yeah. might be one of the contract modules, but it's definitely got something. Yeah. And and but it shouldn't be possible for users to um, inject arbitrary hooks. Absolutely no. not. Full well, you stop. Can, not you possible. can. No, um, it depends. Yeah. Of course, it depends on what you want, but you can, uh, you can define for each hook whether it's mandatory for every single repository, um, whether it's mandatory and according to a wildcard, um, whether it's optional. And usually the optional ones are the ones that if you have parameterization and you leave those empty, they don't run. Right. Or, or, or what you could, could do is just use things which are in, uh, in, uh, in the git config in the local and say, okay, if there's an email that's sent, then I make it send out. Yeah. Yeah. So we want, uh, so I think about providing a standard set of hooks. I have a list to turn that. And um, users should be able to edit the git config to add some variables like a mail address for a mailing list or um, some webhook or some other stuff to get those hooks really run. And they won't run if the variable is set. If, yes. you're, if you're going to be um, consequent about this, then you should not have users have access to the config file of the Git uh, remote. Yeah. Um, but with Git Delight as well, you can specify specific keys that the user is allowed to set. Mm -hmm. and this, this is where the, um, the Git, Git Delight shell comes in. Because only through the shell can you then set these things yeah. and uh, configure the hooks and so on. Yeah. I want to be as strict as possible. Yeah. I, I'm sure that some people <coughs> won't like that, but um, I don't think that's a, a way around it. You can change it for every single repository per person. You can say, this Yeah, but I want, to, to, I want to have. Um, in two years, such a list of exceptions where someone is able to edit all hooks and so on. and. We want to get close back to sanity. The, the, the thing is, no matter what we do with the default set of books, someone's going to go, I don't like that commit mail script. I want to use my own. And as long as we have an arbitrary, ultimately, it can make an external HTTP call. Yeah. It would be they can write uh, whatever yeah. the heck they like yeah. on their own servers under their own security domain and just have an HTTP call True. come out to go, by the way, there's a new commit on that git repository. Mm -hmm. And if they don't like it, they should go to GitHub, uh, GitHub where they where they are. only get arbitrary HTTPS. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, D DSA will probably give us a separate mirror server anyway. That's what they did for the dgit git server. So the cgit does not run on the master repo instance. Right. Yeah. So one comment. Uh, I don't know if you. He's a little bit louder. I don't know if this is immediately useful, but just to keep in mind, at some point I wrote a prototype in Gitalite 2 that scanned the Debian keyring for authentication keys and transformed those into uh, access, Gitalite access keys. And it works well enough, so if that was a desired feature, you could have uh, authentication based directly on the keyring. Of course, most people don't actually know how to deal with authentication keyring or authentication subkeys, so that would be a traumatic transition if you did it tomorrow. But <laughs> We already have all of the authentication data right, in, right. in Alioth at the moment. Right. So the short-term quickest route to separate it out Git server is to have the export mechanism which we've already discussed. Yeah. And that <coughs> includes then all of the people that have Alioth account in order to be able to collaborate via that service. Rather than uh, I'm not using GPG authentication keys, um, Ian's idea of actually requiring signed commits and using the... Signed pushes. 
What the heck is a sign push? What's a sign push? A uh, sign push is where you say git push and uh, your git client <coughs> signs a, 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 an instruction to the server that's the list of ref updates. And the server verifies so that. That's in mainline already. Uh, yeah, it's in git mainline. It's in, it's in SID. Um, I think it's in a stretch already. Uh, the, it needs a backdoor. Um, this is better than signed commits because signed commits are signed at the wrong time. They're signed when you don't want to be, and then at the last moment, the server needs this commit, and they get the signed commit, and they've got no idea which branch it was supposed to be on, even. Whereas the signed push tells the Git server exactly what the <coughs> user, user says Git push this, and <coughs> the <coughs> cryptographic stuff. stuff is 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 a declaration of exactly what the user is saying they wanted done. Um, so, so it has the disadvantage that you need another interface and people another key. Uh, for you can using use your existing GPG. Uh, I'm not uh, developing on a machine that has, that has access to my VBM keys. You only need to do the git push on the machine which is access to your Debian key, and if you are pushing to the repo that's going to be uploaded from, you are in fact pushing to Debian. You're just doing it with a bit of a lack. Maybe make a such key. You can make a such yeah, key. I, I, I need another <laughs> key. Let's not make this too complicated. But, uh, actually, I think for, for the moment we started, we started what we had. I, uh, I really think that's a very good idea uh, to, to do it that way. However, I don't think we. we we should have that as precondition before we can uh, fix that this part of the Git problem. We should at a later time, perhaps optionally, perhaps after some time, say, okay, it's working so fine now, now we force the rest of the projects to it. Yes, but not, it's not for me uh, required for a start. Even though I'm happy if um, we get to it as soon as possible. And what, one pretty simple thing that could work was um, if we wanted to still accept drive by contributions by random people, yeah. is to just this allow pushing to call up main master um, by anyone except EDs and VMs. So everyone else needs to use whatever branch that someone so that, that only works could if merge and it would fix 95% of the problem. Except that that only off. works if everyone that uploads packages that are in collab main Doesn't only takes stuff from that. master. The problem is you can't control the ref namespace uh, like yeah, that. You can be a wait and you, you, yeah, could, if you don't you push master, master you have to configure it. I'm sorry, excuse me. And then you're in the implementing it. Are we right? suggesting that it's okay to have somebody on an uploader's list who's not confident? I mean, let's fix the actual problem. The problem is that somebody is uploading packages, doing merges or pulls from other branches without looking at the code, then that's just reprehensible behavior and they shouldn't be on the upload. Uh, yes, and one hatting that is and it basically problematic. problematic. What, you, what you could do with git to like, which I think is totally, uh, totally harmless, is you could say, yeah, everybody has, an, has a subspace user slash login name and could push to that whatever he wants. I don't feel about uh, bad about it at all because everybody could, pu could push them in any of my packages in his username space. I don't mind, I don't need to, to, to merge that. Right, something like that needs to be. Right. All of this is nice optional add ons. I agree to that. We, we, we shouldn't uh, let the basic things be getting hold by that, but we shouldn't uh, lose uh, that we could do it and, and try to do it as soon as possible. Yeah. Well, I haven't heard anything that suggests that using Gitalite 3 as the base technology sure. is really a problem. So, does right? anybody yeah, object right. to just doing that right now? No. No, right. So, Gitalite 3 is the chosen technology. Decision. I have one thing that is, is, is bugging me slightly because this means that. Well, I'm intending to d the DGIT Git server to continue to exist indefinitely. Um, I don't want to block this improvement by saying it should be the same as my Git server, but ultimately I think these two Git servers want to be the same Git server, um, with one tree and one C Git instance. Um, this will require some care taken about the ref namespace, because DGIT has a ref namespace, and I think this might cause trouble. Is DGIT's ref namespace under refs tags and refs heads? Uh, the worst part is the tag namespace, which is the default tag namespace. Right. 
I'm not sure that it's a very good idea to have both together because you have very strict uh, opinions about uh, what should go to a bigot and how that it's mostly equivalent to pushing packages to Vivian and I think for Elios mm. we want something that is practical. But that's the same. If you upload if, if you push and commit to a master branch here, it is uploaded to Debian. No. 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 Or it, it, it should be it will end there. No. no. Not necessarily. If I have a repository that I have a Debian branch of that's where I push to Debian okay. from, then it's not master. No. Like, that's why I said we can't control but the ref namespace. It's, it's a blind branch. So if there's a branch where the major regular pulls from, and I guess for most packages it's zoo, then if you push to the main, main branch, it's basically the same as uploading. With a delay and hopefully a review. I'm sorry, yeah, there's a conceptual notion that but, uh, there's but, conceptual notion that people merge or pull without reading the deltas just as blown my mind. I think it has to be it's because they don't have another. It does because they don't have another yeah. hit server, right? What, what you do is you set up a team, and there's four of you, and each of you has got like two machines, and you need a git server. You need somewhere to push your changes to so that the others can look at it. And you're all you. What you think is this is our personal branch, and nobody but people in the team is supposed to push to this. But you put it on Collabmate because you don't understand the security properties of Collabmate. Because once upon a time, Collab okay, was theoretically only like pushed to by DDs, you, you, right? You've already no. popped my no. mental no. circuit yeah. breakers four so times with that assertion, so I see yeah. where the problem comes from. <laughs> yeah. Hence the whole. I don't know how other people work, but I, I if don't work I receive anything, some anything, commits anything, with anything, the anything. push that are not mine, I do review them. Every push. Sure. Every commit. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have to do it, but. Do you ever forget? Do you ever make a mistake? Right. And then, and then, no, and of course not, never. I just do. What I mean is, I think most of us do try to do that, uh, and I think most of us are pretty good about it most of the time, but there's a lot of exceptions because we're all human. If it's not automated, we're going to be fallible. And I don't need to put, I'll stop, I'll stop with Garrett, right? But like, it, within Git, Git OLED 3 or some other solution, it would be good if there's a way to allow automating code review. Yeah. Because if, 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 if you're allowed to forget, it'll happen. Um, with regards to people being trusted to upload, uh, I see that a general uh, hygiene of code going around practices are going down the drain. I know people who run Vim plugins of uh, GitHub clones and they regularly get pulled to get them up to date and it's the stuff that's run every time they open a text editor um, so the situation is in general in the general free software development ecosystem bad I don't know how it is in Debian I think it's probably a different problem than we are having here but I would totally like had to have a second ball at another DevCon or online in which we figure out ways to run white hat attacks uh, to um, do some estimate on how easy it is to actually get stuff into that. Um, I'm, I volunteer to be part of that team. So, I, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. so what you said before about you would like to get the Git service merged one time is that you don't think it's a good idea. Actually, what I think we should uh, conclude for this discussion is just that we should try to set up the Git to light in a way that doesn't obstruct and, 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 and possibly merge in the future. I don't think that we need to, need to discuss nothing, nothing or decide nothing more at the moment. Just we, shouldn't, we should try to keep the way open. If we say that we don't do it anyway for other reasons, fine. But we shouldn't close the way now unnecessarily. Okay. So I think <coughs> there's a general agreement with Git like 3. When can we turn off Collaborate in its current cool form? Can we just and by accident, by accident I'm, an, uh, I'm a list master and I require a list, maybe even VZS, something like that, where you can discuss all the stuff to get uh, a list of best practices, maybe enhancements to the Git server like Garrett and so on, um, to, to get everything in line. There's also VCS Bookage. There's already a list called VCS Bookage, which is not used for very much else and you probably want to just use that. Okay. What's the status of the right bit on all of the books on Alias right now? Please repeat again. What's the status of the right bit on all of the books on Alias right now? Who can write to these books right now? Everyone does the uh, cross-pandemic SCM group. 
we did. So can we? No, we can't. It? We can't change that because the directories are. The whole yeah, directory we, path up to the hooks is writable by anybody in Collab Maker. But, but if the hook that. directories are main read only, you couldn't change that without making people not able to do the repo right. management that they currently do. We can we can turn it no, off no. and chatter my chatter I in. But <laughs> because, unfortunately, our time is over. Yeah. So. We could make uh, call up main to it only, but I don't think that's what we want to do now. So that's why that's so so what's all the next steps? What are the next steps? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next, next step is somebody goes to DSA and says, Can I have a VM for. There's an open yeah. bug. There's already an open bug for getting a VM for that, so that's already done. As soon as we have a VM, we can start with doing it. So who's going to set up the server? It's not going to get away now, not the garage. So I think yeah. the basic conclusion is that you will coordinate the further efforts. Well, okay. Then we have a status. Thanks. Um, I still suggest that uh, the, ho the hooks directories and the hooks will be set read only as soon as possible because um, I think this is mm. streaming and I yes. think there's a bunch of uh, script kiddies that do watch those streams. And um, they might be just right now trying to figure out how to explore this. Absolutely, this is now open. So this, this is a... Now you've oh. given them the idea. They are not in my opinion. It's happened today. Right. <laughs> not yet. yet. <clears throat> Seriously. Yeah. Are you certain? We can stop approving collaborate requests. I'm doing interesting. So, I was thinking about getting those hooks read only as soon as possible, or limit us to another group. I think we have an DD group. Yeah, we have one. Because you had to also look from, from the user did LDAP and there is a debbing group. Yeah, so I will get probably um, read, uh, read write for every DD. Okay. But uh, I noted that I can go to the dot directory, rename hooks in foo, and make the hooks, and then try to.